June 11th, UFC 275, Singapore. You know, Singapore is not that far from Australia, so I'm thinking that, you know, flying over to Singapore compared to the U.S. is, is probably much better for you. How is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pre pre pretty excited for, the, for, this, for Singapore just because it's closer and it's like sort of in that Southeast Asia region, sort of get a bit more backing from Australia, a bit more backing from the Philippines. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, what is the reaction from you know the philippines or just South, southeast asia in general and and are you having a bunch of people fly over it's not that far uh not really no <laughs> but you, you have to remember some of these countries are real poor it's not like they, they have money just enough money to be like oh you know what josh is fighting let's let's go you know book a plane ticket and head over so it's it's not one of that it's not one of those things i wish it was i wish it was it wasn't the case but yeah it's a... well everything has gotten a lot more expensive i think with with travel and stuff like that since the pandemic so i i hear you um your opponent man uh sumu Choi, three and three in the ufc a lot of people are going to look at this and say stylistically it's going to be an incredible matchup maybe similar to the jordan matchup you know stylistically similar to that you know when you look at him and his skill set against yours what do you see i think it's it's going to be it's going to be a, an ag aggressive fighter versus a, a counter fighter uh, he's the aggressive fighter, and I am the counter fighter. Um, but yeah, it could go, it could go a few ways this fight. But I do see it being a very, a very, a very technical, but also a very entertaining fight. I think um, the stand up is going to be a pretty, pretty good showing. I think it's going to be very entertaining. I, I feel like, you know, both of us, we both have that that knockout punch that, like, if if you know. Either of us are, are caught lacking, someone's going to sleep. So, um, yeah, I think personally, I think it's a great fight. When when this fight got offered, I was like already like as soon as as soon as they brought up that name, I knew straight away like it's going to be a banger of a fight. Like I know how tough he is, and I'm not taking him lightly at all. And um, yeah, I think he's stylistically, it's going to be a great fight because again, you got a guy that likes to come forward, likes to do likes to open up big shots and you've got a guy in me that likes to you know play on the back foot and sort of try and try and pick guys apart so it's going to be he's tailor-made for me and and i'm tailor-made for him because he's going to be the one walking forward and i'm going to be the one on the back foot so yeah i think it's going to be stylistically a really really good good matchup yeah it's one of those fights where people are waiting to see who gets clipped first to react to you know what i mean like it's one of those you know you're on the edge of your seat like waiting for who's gonna get you know hurt first and then come yeah. back because they don't i don't see a fight where it's like like one shot someone's gonna get knocked out i feel like it's gonna be an accumulation of shots or or you know just a wild scramble or something like that and, and Choi, he is very aggressive some might say he's a little bit too aggressive you know how will mm -hmm. that come to your advantage that's what i'm saying is that like uh, i feel like if he if he feels like he can just go in there and uh, walk over me and come straight away and like, you know, overstep his boundaries and overextend himself. I feel like he's the one that's going to be the one on his back, you know? So I think he better come out calculated. You know, if he doesn't come out calculated, I feel like he'll overreach and my time to shine. So either way, I'm, I'm, ex I'm ex expecting a, a fight that's going to be, you know, pretty pretty high volume pretty high pace and a lot of damage is going to be done to both of us so i'm i'm yeah expecting that sort of sort of fight you know i'm not expecting to put away choi that quickly like i'm not expecting an easy fight i'm not i'm not expecting for like yeah like a, a first round fight i'm expecting like three rounds me and him gonna be banged and bruised and we're gonna be fighting all the way to the last bell so when you dissect his his ufc run every opponent that has grappled him has defeated him is that something mm. that sticks out to to you yeah it does it does but again like he obviously you know you, you would think that his his team would know that that has been his his downside so you'd think that he that i would come out trying to look for takedowns and stuff like look if it's there i'm going to take it and and it is an mma fight it, we're, we're not kickboxers we're not muay thai guys we're mma guys so i'm gonna mix it up when, it, when the time comes but um yeah i definitely do see the route you know taking him down taking his back and, and trying to finish him from there but there's it, plenty of ways this fight can go but yeah that's that's obviously one one way that i've, I've, I've 
visualized it, you know, but we'll see. We'll see how he comes out. I want to go back a little bit, you know, after the, the Charles Jordan fight, the draw, you know, you picked up your first UFC win against uh, Xiao Leon. Take us back to that fight and explain the level of satisfaction with your performance. Oh man, it was just good to to get the the W. To be honest, it, like just to just to get that win under my belt was uh, just a massive thing. I, I really didn't feel like a UFC fighter until I, I achieved that win. Like you can get signed to the UFC and, and then you know lose multiple times and then get cut from the UFC, but and then people still call themselves UFC fighters. But for me, I needed to get that win just under my belt just to be like, all right. Now I feel like it. Now I actually feel like I belong here, and 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 yeah, it was it was a lot of satisfaction getting that, and um, especially coming off a draw, which I thought I I, I won. Um, yeah, it's 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 extra satisfying. So. Yeah, that that draw it it changes people's perspective of you and your run so far in the UFC. Do you agree? And like if it was a win, like you got a proper win, you'd be on a two fight win streak and people just look at that and say like this dude is the next, you know, top 15 guy, right? Exactly. Yeah, it is. It is. And the, the, something has to be done about the judging. I don't know like how it's going to be scored, whether they do like live scoring and they tell the corners who won that round and whatnot. Just like, you know, a soccer game, like the, the scoreboard is always up there or like a jiu-jitsu match. There's always a scoreboard you can see. But yeah, like I just don't understand. Like these judges can 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 literally change people's lives, and then there's no consequence on their part, like whatsoever. So there has to be there has to be something that is gonna make these guys score these fights. Whether it's you know extra two judges, so it's gonna be five judges instead of three. Um, yeah, there's I, I I to be honest, personally, I don't know how how it's gonna get solved, but. <laughs> Something has to be done about the judging. Yeah, especially with so much on the line. And even, you know, with guys that are not fighting for, like, title eliminators or what, what, whatnot, it's still money. Like, your livelihood. It's so that, exactly. It's your career. It's, like, it, you're, it's the next step. Like, like, you win this fight, you go into the next step, you get a better contract. Or, like, you know what I mean? And, and your life, like, your every fight progresses, you know, considering how you, you won your last fight or whether you lost your last fight. Like, it's like, let's say if you were to lose the fight, like, okay, you get cut from the UFC. Now you're not in the UFC. Like, how, how life-changing is that just because of a, a bad decision or something like that? So, I don't know. It's it's very, yeah. It has been a huge topic of discussion the last couple of weeks because we've had some crazy, crazy judging, especially in those in the main event, you know, on the main cards and stuff. But, um, yeah, man, something has to change. And hopefully judging doesn't you know factor into this fight coming up most likely it won't you know what i mean just looking at the matchup mm -hmm. now before you booked choi you had a fight booked with damon jackson and then COVID hit how hard did the virus hit you like bad like proper bad uh like I, at first i thought like ah uh, you know i'll be sweet uh i like in australia i had to do a seven day isolation when i when i when i tested positive for COVID. And yeah, like I thought like, yeah, it'd be a week and I'll be back straight into the gym. I felt a little bit sick at the beginning and then it like really came on bad. Like I had the headaches, I had body aches, vomiting, diarrhea, hot and cold sweats, uh, no, ten uh, no sense of uh, uh, smell, no taste. So like it, I, I got hit with everything um, and it was, an, it was, it was, yeah, pretty bad for like five or six days. But it, it was bad for those those five or six days, like like really bad. But then, also coming back to the gym and trying to work out, it was I could feel like there was something not right. And like any time I tried to push, I felt like like there was like a, a a weight on my chest, and I just felt like heavy in the chest. And I was like really, yeah, there was something there was something going on. So I didn't want to I didn't want to go through a camp trying to push through when I felt something, you know, potentially in my lungs that could, could, could really, you know, mess me up. So. Yeah. yeah. I would say a good, like 
month, five, four weeks, five weeks. But I like until like I started to be able to train and get my heart rate up and and not, you know, not have to worry about feeling that ch- that 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 pain in my chest. And I could actually take deep breaths. Like I felt like whenever I was training and my heart rate started to pick up, I, it was very hard for me to like be able to like take a real deep breath and be able to like, you know, like blow out. Like it was like everything was shallow. Like, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. That's good that, uh, you finally got back to, you know, a hundred percent and get into a training camp because if you yeah. notice some other fighters, it took a lot longer to actually get their health back to normal and, and get into a, and get into a camp and, and to fight. Now for yeah. yourself, you're at Igor MMA. Do you cross train anywhere else? It seemed like you've done most of your camp there. I did most of my camp this time around there, but usually I, I jump around. Like I get, um, I train with Jamie Malaki, but he's from the central central coast. I go down to Volk's gym in freestyle in 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 uh, Windang, and then I get like, um, yeah, like I get I get good guys in Australia. Like I get Martin Nguyen from one Net one championship. He I get him to come to to train with me as well sometimes. So yeah, I'm getting good work everywhere, and and yeah, I'm just it's like. Most of my, my, my training camp is, is at Eagle MMA, but I get guys in. Guys always, always you know, whenever a fight's lined up, a lot of the guys always try and try and help come in and help out wherever they can. So I really appreciate those guys. Those guys come in and, and give me good work. Yeah, the community's always been like that, though. I've noticed even before you were in the UFC, you'd have guys yeah. come in or you'd go out and help guys prepare for the Yeah, event. that's it. Like, where, where it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's nice knowing that you have that sort of that sort of you know mutual like okay this guy's getting ready let's give him let's, let's help him out here you know i can help you out there like so yeah it's it's good it's a it's a good i feel like it's a with with all of us fighting now internationally a lot of a lot of the guys are like it just proves a point that we don't need to we don't need to travel to to these big gyms to 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 create create successful fighters we just you know we can we can do it here with the fighters that we have here so and there's there's it's it's very rare that we we're going to be guys that are going to be fighting each other because of we're on the international level sort of things. So we're in the international stage. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is. It's, it's good. And you know, it's different from like, if you're already signed to the UFC and guys started showing up and be like, Hey, can I be a part? You know, it's different. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to cloud chase a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's good when I, now that I'm in the UFC, we've got a lot of, a lot of, young kids coming through the gym trying to you know trying to get in and 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 train train with me and stuff so it's good though like it's bringing it's bringing new faces to the gym and it's inspiring inspiring the younger generation to be like look you can go to any sort of mma gym and make it you know but yeah that's it's inspiring the, the younger generation Earlier, you talked about, you know, this fight being just a, a firefight. You know, what are you expecting out of yourself? What are you expecting out of this performance? Now, I'm, re- I'm like every fight, I've just been getting more comfortable in there. And I feel like I'm just getting more and more comfortable dealing with just everything that comes with fighting in the UFC. Interviews, interviews with you, interviews, you know, with, with everyone, just the media, just everything. Just, um, just the lifestyle of it, I feel. I, I'm getting used to the used to the sort of chaos of everything and um yeah i i feel like the more comfortable i get in there the the, the better i get to show my you know my my true abilities and when when i'm when i'm feeling good and, and comfortable in there i feel like that's when i'm gonna shine the best and that's when you guys are gonna get my best performance so i feel like this fight is definitely gonna this guy has you know has pushed me to the next level i think this training camp I, I, he has pushed me to the next level visualizing fighting a guy like him has really i think pushed me to that to that next level where it's gonna be like okay josh has improved like every fight I've, I've been you can see like in between every single fight i've improved every single fight so this fight is no different i feel like um Choi has definitely has definitely pushed me during this training camp it's like um you want a reaction from the masses of like this guy is ready for that next yeah. level That's of it. competition with this performance That's they just had against Choi. Well, exactly. Like he's a he's a good. He to be honest, he was winning that fight against Caceres, his last fight, and so he would have been on a four fight win streak right now. So he's a dangerous guy, and and uh, you know he's definitely up there. He's definitely one of the top prospects as well. So 
I'm excited. <laughs> you know, I'm excited for this fight. Yeah, he's 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 really he he just me being matched up with him. He's he's pushed me to the next level. Like we haven't even fought yet, but he's already just by his presence and his him being him has already pushed me to that next level. All right, and and I saw that you know you'll be fighting out your contract with this fight. Why did you decide not to resign immediately with the UFC? I'm waiting on the UFC. Okay. To, to yeah, so I feel like it's a it's a it's a, a do or die. Um, it's always do or die. You're always doing your your, your next biggest fight. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a it, every fight. Every fight's your your biggest fight. So you know, this ain't no different. Like even when I was fighting on the local scene, every fight was do or die. You know, you're only as good as your last your last fight. So every fight, don't look past that that next fight. You you just look at the fight that you have now, and, and there's no difference to this fight. Is is you know like when people sign a contract with the UFC, right? A lot of people think like they're gonna be with the UFC for a long period of time, but really you can get cut anytime. And like you said, you know every fight is an important fight. It doesn't even mean it doesn't even matter if it's the last fight on your contract, right? No, it doesn't it doesn't because you have to remember as much as this is a sport, it's also entertainment. It's a it's a business of entertainment, like. Yes, yes, we train hard, and yes, you know it's a technical martial arts sport and and whatnot it has heaps of Olympic sports in it. But at the end of the day, what's what's getting the UFC to run is people want to wanting to watch it, the entertainment side of it. So if you go out there and you know, for instance, um, I was actually watching it the other day. It was the Colby Covington? How Colby used to be so so humble and and whatnot. He used to be like real this real nice guy. And then they told him that they were going to cut him because he was just like any generic sort of fighter, like any generic sort of wrestler that was just going in there wrestling and, and you know, beating these guys. Yes, he was winning, but he was just any generic sort of fighter and wasn't bringing the attention, you know, wasn't bringing the masses, wasn't bringing the eyes, wasn't putting bums on seats. So, like, you have to go out there and you have to perform. It's not just only about winning, but it's also about, you know, performing. So every fight is your biggest fight, like, like I said, like you have to go out there and you know fight your ass off. All right, one last question. There's some rumors, you know, flying around about an event later this year in Australia. Do you think there will be a show? From your perspective, you live in Australia, so you would know best. I think so. I don't see why not. Uh, I think we're finally um, lifting lifting a lot of restrictions. And uh, yeah, this weekend we have you know an American flying in to to fight Cambosis. We got Devin Haney and Cambosis fighting in Melbourne. So yeah, that, that's that's creating a lot of buzz. So I don't see why not the UFC wouldn't come here a bit later on in the year. So all right, before that, man, June 11th, UFC 275, Singapore, Josh, back in action. Thank you so much, man, for the time. No worries. Thank you.